Okay, we're going to continue on talking about thermal processing of metals. Uh, we've talked previously about uh, annealing processes. Now we're going to talk about something called hardenability. Um, before we want, before we launch into defining hardenability, I want to review a few concepts um, that we talked about when we discussed phase transformations um, in in uh, steel. So, a first review concept is that remind you what martensite is. Remember that it's the hardest steel microstructure, and it's required in order to form tempered martensite, um, which remember is it. Uh, nearly as strong as martensite, but with enhanced toughness and ductility. So, if we if we have a martensite uh, microstructure here under tempering, we form tempered martensite, which remember is not actually the same um, even phases, right? Uh, martensite being a body centered tetragonal phase, a tempered martensite being uh, cementite partic particles in an alpha ferrite matrix. Um, in order to form martensite, remember that we require rapid cooling via quenching. So quenching is just rapidly immersing in some quenching medium. So uh, typically that's going to be water, air, or oil. And so in order to form martensite, we have to cool it fast enough to get past this nose of the phase transformation into these martensite uh, forming regions. Okay, so uh, uh, it's, it's a hard steel. We have to quench it, cool it quickly to get to martensite. And uh, if we if we quench it, if we cool it fast, think of any specimen. In this case, I'm showing you sort of a, a cylinder, and we're looking at a cross section of it. The cooling rate isn't going to be uniform, uh, and the reason is that you're going to you put a, let's say a cylinder of steel into a bucket of water, and the surface obviously cools faster than the interior. And what that means is that you're going to have a spatial variation of microstructure. And here on the left, I'm just showing that, okay, we have some high temperature at, as we quench it at some time, as time goes up, this is a little less than a second, a little less than three seconds, up to five seconds. You can see that the surface is cooling and it's slowly progressing to the, to the inside of the uh, cylinder. But, but because that cooling rate is slower, uh, it's not going to necessarily form the same microstructure. So in order to realize the optimal properties of steel, we'd like to figure out a way to produce martensite throughout the entire structure. Uh, the ability to do this is going to depend on the alloy composition. Uh, we've already seen that before in terms of how alloying affects uh, our, our phase transformations and also how it affects even the eutectoid temperature and the eutectoid compositions. Uh, it's also going to depend on the type and character of the quenching medium. Uh, so if we quench in air, which is a slower cooling process, obviously we're going to get a different microstructure than if we quench in water, which is a, a more severe uh, quenching process. And finally, it's going to depend on the geometry of the specimen. If I have a cylinder that's one meter in diameter, uh, that's obviously going to not cool at the same rate at its, in its center as a, as a piece of uh, a cylinder of steel that's, let's say, a quarter inch in diameter. OK, so the first thing we want to talk about, uh, I think the latter two are pretty obvious and we just understand them intrinsically as engineers. But the first one, uh, we want to find a way to figure out how we can characterize the influence of the alloy composition on the this, this sort of hardening behavior. OK, so now we're set up to talk a little bit about hardenability. So the first question is, what is hardenability? Well, it's the ability of steels to be hardened by the formation of martensite uh, due to some fixed heat treatment. And what it does is it's measuring the influence of alloy composition on the ability to form martensite under quenching. Okay? So something with high hardenability uh, means that martensite not only forms at the surface, but also forms in the interior. And so how would we do that? Well, what we're trying to do is to to push the nose of that transformation further out in time so uh, so that slower cooling rates will still form martensite. Uh, something with low hardenability uh, is where martensite only forms at the surface. Uh, so it, it it's a, a, a little bit of a subjective or qualitative test, but there is a standard procedure, uh, and that procedure is called the Jomini N-Quench test. And so I'm going to show you uh, sort of a just a video of what it looks like occurring and all it is going to be is we're going to we're going to put a hot piece of metal uh, into this uh, uh, container and then we're going to spray it with some cooling medium in this case water and we're going to see how cooling progresses up up the uh, the hot metal and so the 
the uh, that that is the geometry in quench, and then we'll kind of define it a little bit more uh, formally here uh, in this next slide. So the first thing is that we're going to austenitize a cylindrical specimen at some prescribed temperature and time. Then we're going to cool one end of that specimen. So here's the spraying water that you just saw in the previous video. We're going to cool that, uh, and then it's going to, as as you saw before, it's going to cool this end rapidly, and it's going to slowly propagate up this. Um, cylinder. Uh, once we have done that, we're going to actually grind a flat region on this cylinder, and then we're going to do hardness tests uh, at some interval along that flat region, and we're going to measure the hardness as a function of the distance from the quenched end. That's, that is how we measure hardenability. So hardenability isn't hardness, right? But it's rather measuring hardness as a function of distance from a quenched end. So it tells us how easily it is, uh, how easy it is rather to to uh, to form martensite in a particular alloy. One thing that we observe in this process is that alloying elements in the steel do, do delay the austenite to perlite or bainite transformation. It moves that nose sort of further out in time so that more martensite can form with a fixed cooling rate. So let's look at what that, that is. Uh, here's our uh, uh, hardenability curves for uh, just a plain carbon steel 1040 and you can see that as we're this is an x-axis is showing you the distance from the quenched end and here's the hardness so the hardness drops off rapidly as we get further from the end which suggests that we're just we're only forming martensite in this this uh, early region but in let's say contrast to 4340 which is a which is a, uh, an alloy steel with uh, other elements in it, we can see that as we go away from the quenched end, we don't decrease nearly as much. In fact, so there's probably a, a large percentage of martensite being formed even at the very end of that uh, specimen. So, uh, and then I'll just point out too on the top, uh, this, this is the distance from the quenched end, which actually also corresponds to different cooling rates. If you remember back to our phase transformation where we had sort of continuous cooling rates, um, uh, we, could, we could look at those, uh, uh, those transformation diagrams and kind of make some estimates as to what this curve would look like. So low hardenability looks like this 1040 steel. Uh, high hardenability looks like 4340 uh, because it... it uh, the, the hardness propagates deep into the into the specimen. Okay, so that's that's the the uh, kind of the upshot of of hardenability and evaluation using the Jomini inquench test. Uh, now let's talk just real briefly about the severity of the quench, and all that means is that it indicates the rate of cooling. Um, faster cooling is going to be a more severe quench. So uh, usually we think about air, oil, and water. Air is obviously the slowest uh, uh, or the, the least severe quench. Um, and then oil is going to be a little bit uh, more severe, faster than air. And then water is going to be faster than oil. So, um, And then obviously, if I, if, if I want to cool something faster, uh, I can move the medium, right? So if I, have, if I put a piece of steel in water, uh, that's a severe quench. But if I agitate or move the water around, that's going to even be a more severe quench. It's the same principle as as wind chill here in Wyoming, right? If the wind is blowing, uh, it's going to cool you off a lot, a lot faster than if it's if it's calm. And then the final uh, uh, factor to consider is the geometry effect. And I already mentioned before, uh, it, this is governed entirely by the ratio of surface area uh, to mass. And so the higher surface area to mass ratio, the faster it's going to cool. That's obvious, right? And as a result, we're going to have more martensite formation. And so you can look at, you can look at, so here's, I'm just reminding you what the graph of the hardenability looks like. Here's the distance from the quenched end. And you can look at some charts that'll give you this equivalent distance from the quenched end uh, as a function of the diameter of, let's say, a bar. And as you can see, the, the larger the diameter, it acts as this, let's say this curve here is the center of the bar. It pushes it further and further out as far as the distance from the quenched end. So further out from the quenched end, here we are further out, lower hardness values. So uh, the larger the sample, the the, um, the the slower we're gonna be able to, or the, yeah, the harder it's gonna be for us to cool uh, at a rate that can form martensite in the interior. And so we won't typically uh, be able to harden that entire piece in the same fashion. Uh, 
the other thing I'll mention is that if we have um, irregular geometries, usually those have high surface areas, and so those are actually pretty easy uh, to harden because uh, we can we can uh, make them cool quickly. So that's all I really wanted to say about hardening or, and hardenability. Um, hopefully that's clear. Uh, next, we're going to move to talk about something that's really not uh, specific to steels or, or even relevant to steels. We're going to talk about something called precipitation hardening in the next lecture. So